Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? Before the days of the Concord jet, there was train travel. In the late 1800s and through the first half of this century in Maine, trains brought people to and from their hometowns. You could hop on the train and go just about anywhere in the country. Two stations in Maine, one in Portland and one in Bangor, were not only beautiful buildings, but represented perhaps the most public places in each of the cities. They were both called Union Station. Earl Shettleworth of the Maine Historic Preservation Commission. In the original historical sense, Union Station meant uh, the union of many lines, of many uh, tracks, of many um, uh, routes of transportation, that they would all come together at that point In Portland, Union Station was a grand building on a grand scale. Built in 1888, the station was originally the connection of the Boston and Maine, Maine Central, and Portland and Ogdensburg railroads. Uh, as a piece of architecture, of course, it was pure late 19th century fantasy. Uh, it was uh, in a style uh, which we would term today the chateauesque. It was based upon uh, the French chateaus of the Lura Valley uh, with a, a great square tower with a pyramidal top on it, uh, turrets and dormers uh, stretching out uh, across the, uh, the structure, uh, all, uh, of course, executed in uh, a very light pink New Hampshire granite, so that it was, uh, it was really, I think, for the late 19th century, a very powerful corporate statement that we, as a railroad, uh, are here to stay. This was a, an incredibly uh, powerful, large-scale, permanent kind of investment to make in a building. Uh, and it also was a symbol of the importance of Portland as a, a rail crossroads. In Bangor, Union Station was built in 1907. The city had outgrown its other stations and a new station was built. Though not as ornate as Portland's, Union Station in Bangor was a magnificent building made of buff brick and slate and marble and oak with brand new electric lights. It had a restaurant and a tower with a clock that rose 119 feet into the air. The dedication in 1907 was an auspicious occasion, with many notables from the city and from the Maine Central Railroad. A reception was held and dinner was served in the station restaurant to the music of a 10-piece orchestra. On the menu was Penobscot River salmon with hollandaise sauce, roast lamb, ladyfinger, strawberry ice cream, topped off with coffee and cigars, and speeches. Former Governor Henry B. Cleave said, Mr. Toastmaster and gentlemen of the Board of Trade, when I am seeking after truth, I always come to Bangor. And it is a source of much satisfaction that I am permitted to be with you tonight and join with you in the dedication of Bangor's Union Station. The hopes and expectations of years have been more than fully realized. And tonight, you celebrate the erection of a building a Union Station, one of the best and most modern in all of New England. The last run of the 470 may also have marked the beginning of the end of passenger trains in the state. Over the next six years, profits declined, and eventually it became impossible to continue passenger service. 
times were changing. And uh, of course, very quickly, once passenger service was, was phased out around 1960, uh, the Maine Central Railroad made the decision uh, to start uh, selling uh, it's, it's, uh, a lot of its real estate, particularly its passenger stations across the state. The railroad uh, was in financial difficulty in terms of the passenger service. Uh, they were, were phasing it out in or because it wasn't paying. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the, the real estate was, would be a, a, a financial burden, an economic burden as well. Both train stations closed and eventually were sold to developers. I guess down deep in my heart, I was hoping that a use would be found for it, but because of the particular design of it and the uh, amount of money that it would have taken to convert it into retail commercial space, I, I guess I really knew at that time that the eventual end was going to be a, a demolishing of it. That was the trend in those days, unfortunately. Uh, urban renewal, knock it down. And with no use seen for either Union Station, the wrecking balls began to swing. On Thursday, August 31st, 1961, the Union Station Tower in Portland toppled to the ground. People lined the streets and wept. And of course, this was uh, a, a you know, tremendous blow to people in Portland because the station was, I think, as much as any other building in, in the city. The station uh, meant more to people, and it meant so much to, to people because it was a combination of the glory of its architecture uh, and the fact that virtually everybody in Portland had very close, very deep personal associations with that building because it was a building through which everybody had passed during the course of their lives. Exactly three months later, on Thursday, November 30th, 1961, the Union Station Tower in Bangor fell. One of my co-workers, uh, Bud Spaulding, and I sat in an automobile on Washington Street, just about on the Kandusky Stream Bridge, and watched the wrecking ball swing on the tower. It was the end of a long-standing era. It was kind of a sad situation. Uh, we didn't want it to happen, but we didn't have the knowledge or the power or the money to keep it from happening. Today on the sites of both stations sit small shopping centers. The legacy of the destruction of these two buildings is a lasting one. 